In this message, we draw 10 insights on the importance of faith from the ministry of Jesus. Generally, every Sunday, we talk about the power of declaration uh, of God's word. So we're going to do that uh, this morning as well. Um, so if you could please turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 11 and verse 23. Okay, this is the time when Jesus cursed the fig tree uh, in front of his disciples. And the next day, when the disciples saw that it had actually happened, uh, he, he's giving them a lesson on faith and how to exercise faith. So in verse 23, he says, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. So basically Jesus is saying that whatever someone believes in their heart first, okay, and then speaks with their mouth, they can expect that to happen. So if he were speaking to a mountain and asking the mountain to move, when we believe in our heart doubting nothing, and we speak with our mouth, then the mountain will be removed and be cast into the sea. So in order to exercise the faith that we have in our heart, uh, Jesus is adding another step and he's saying we've got to speak our faith. So when we believe and we speak, we can see the result of our faith. So even this morning, we're going to make our declaration where we speak what God says about us. And I encourage us to do that with faith in our hearts. Uh, can we just rise to our feet, church? Please hold your Bibles in your hands. Hold it high up in the air and, and please repeat this after me. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ. And a channel of his blessing to many people. I advance boldly to take new ground to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power and authority vested in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back or pin me down. The forces of the enemy cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle in Jesus' name. Uh, before we're all seated, uh, I'd just like to share a uh, a request, a prayer request that, you know, we're all going to join together and, and pray about. So this past Tuesday, some of you would know our uh, uh, um, Melky and Christina who served as our youth pastors. Um, they've had a baby girl. They're blessed with a baby girl. Uh, she is called Zephanie. Uh, uh, however, uh, there, there are some challenges with regard to her health. Um, uh, you know, she uh, has certain medical conditions which, which the doctors cannot address. Uh, and and so we really need a miraculous intervention for this little baby. Uh, and so this morning, I, I encourage all of us to just join our hearts and our faith, the way I was talking to you uh, from Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Just go ahead and, and pray over this child. Uh, let's, let's pray for two specific things. Firstly, for, for every abnormality, uh, every condition you know, that, that the doctors are talking about, for that to be broken off of her in Jesus' name and for uh, a miraculous restoration 
okay god is is a he is a miracle worker he is a creative god even today uh, right he is able to perform creative miracles uh, and so can we just pray together church uh, i lead us in a time of prayer and just go ahead and agree with me for zephany um, heavenly father we we thank you lord as your word says god lord every gift from you is good and perfect and so god we declare that zephany is perfect in the name of jesus lord even right now we take a thought authority over every spirit of infirmity father lord any condition god lord that is being manifested in her body lord we come against it in the name of jesus lord we just declare over her lord the power of jehovah rafa the lord our healer lord we declare over her father that that god you uh, lord you by your stripes she is healed oh god and god we we ask father that she be completely restored god a hundred percent god father we speak your wholeness we speak your wholeness lord let every function in her body father become normal in jesus name and god right now we cover lord uh, pastors melki and christina uh, lord we ask for your protection lord we ask for your your strength your wisdom god your peace to rule and reign god in their hearts father we thank you we thank you lord for what you have done in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. Thank you church. You may be seated. You may be seated. Uh two more quick announcements. Um this year we encourage everyone to um go ahead and share the gospel with others. We were talking about uh, lifestyle evangelism last year um and and we continue to encourage everyone to go ahead and be a witness for Jesus. Uh so win people for for Christ and uh you can bring them to your life groups you can bring them to church. Um and the second thing that we encourage us to do is to uh go ahead and pray for people. minister to people whichever way you know uh, pray for them you know pray for the sick uh, and trust god the, for god to do miracles in people's lives and we believe as a church you know this year god has called us to advance boldly right so we don't want to hold back uh, every opportunity go ahead and see the power of god uh, as you step out in faith so are we uh, excited about this series on faith yes Okay that's that's wonderful. So we've been talking about faith uh, and today is part 3 uh where we will talk about faith and the ministry of Jesus. Before we go into that I'll quickly review what we did the last two Sundays. On the first um Sunday when we spoke of faith uh these are the things that that we said. We said that faith connects us to god the okay, faith is our connection to god faith is required to please god without faith it is impossible to please god so we've got to believe uh, that god is uh, someone who will do what he says he will do and faith is supposed to be in the person of jesus christ uh, jesus taught us that you no know, uh, at one point he said have faith in god and because we know who god is we are able to trust him we are able to trust his word so faith is in the person of jesus christ faith is based on relationship now faith is more than just a principle but we walk with god uh, as we exercise our faith and abraham you know to abraham it was accounted as righteousness so faith is about relationship with god faith is of the heart so even when uh, we are unable to have all the answers in our mind we can still believe because faith is of the heart we believe in our heart and god calls us to live by faith so moment by moment we've got to learn to live by faith uh we also looked at what faith is faith is the proof of ownership things that we've not yet seen things that we've not yet walked in things that are there in our tomorrow now we have assurance of those things right now and that is what faith is it's the proof of ownership faith uh, uh is conceived 
through the word of God and we looked at the fact that faith has also got to be nurtured and built up in us. Faith uh, in the word is faith in God. You know, God and his word are not different. So faith in the word uh, is faith in God. Faith is also like a muscle. So when we study faith, faith uh, is talked of as if it were growing. You know, little faith, uh, great faith, so on and so forth. So it's a muscle when exercised faith can grow in each of our hearts. And then we talked about some factors that influence faith and that faith causes the power of God uh, and the power of God in his word to be released. So uh, these these are some of the things that that we've uh, studied so far. And last Sunday, uh, we tried to understand three concepts uh, which have an interplay. Uh, There's the sovereignty of God. While God can do anything, And everything that he pleases, God still calls us to have faith. And there are times where God needs our faith to move on our behalf. So though God has provided everything we need for life and godliness through his grace, we still require faith to access what God has already provided through grace. Okay, so we, we, we looked at the interplay of, of these things. Uh, and today, uh, we're going to be looking at the life of Jesus and some of the insights, uh, you know, the way he talked about faith and, and the way he responded to uh, people who came to him in faith. So from, from the way Jesus ministered, we, we will uh, look at 10 different insights. Now, why look at the life of Jesus Jesus is the eternal word. The Bible tells us that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, when he walked the earth, you know, he was the revelation of the father. He was the express image of God. You know, the way God would respond to people, Jesus demonstrated that to us. So as we examine the interactions of Jesus with people, we realize that people came to him with faith. And when people approached him with faith, you know, Jesus would heal them. Jesus would deliver them. Jesus would do miracles in their lives. And so uh, Jesus gave faith importance. Now, all the examples which are there in the Bible, uh, well, I'm sure that, you know, every healing that Jesus did, miracles that uh, that Jesus performed are not covered uh, in this Bible because there are places in scripture where you read that he did many other miracles, but they're not recorded for us, right? And there, there are times when the multitudes came to Jesus. So that means Jesus healed more than one person on several occasions. How did he do that? Well, we do not have, uh, you know, record of those things. However, uh, the way the Bible tells us that many things that are recorded for us uh, are so we can learn from them. Okay, so these are the scriptures, uh, the accounts that people have experienced miracles, healings and deliverances from Jesus. The ones that are recorded, we can learn from those stories. We can learn from those um, instances. So, Today we're going to try and examine some of these examples in scripture for us. Now, the kind of faith uh, that Jesus wanted in people, uh, he's also someone who took time to teach people about the kind of faith. Once again, you know, Mark 11, uh, 23 and 24, where we, we just use that scripture to make our declaration this morning where we said that if we believe in our heart and we speak with our mouth, then even a mountain can move. So Jesus taught faith and the kind of faith that Jesus spoke of is what we term as the God kind of faith. What is the God kind of faith? If you can just take a, a, take a minute to um, think about the fig tree. Jesus spoke to the fig tree and and what we understand is that the fig tree would have dried up that very moment but it took 24 hours for that to be seen and when the disciples saw it, they were amazed. But Jesus told them, guys, if you believe and if you speak, this is what you can 
expect. The God kind of faith. So when Jesus spoke, go home, you know, your, your servant is well. It happened. When God spoke, let there be light, there was light. Because he believed in his heart and he spoke with his mouth. So that is the God kind of faith uh, that Jesus taught to the people. And he wants us to have that kind of faith. So Jesus taught about the God kind of faith. He took every opportunity to do that. And, you know, we're really encouraged because this Jesus that we serve, you know, Hebrews 13 and verse 8 tells us he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So today, if he were to find faith in our hearts, he would do the same that he did for all the people in the Bible. Amen? Covenants have changed, but God has not changed. We are in the new covenant with Christ Jesus, but our God is still the same God of the old covenant and the new covenant. And Jesus is the same today who responds to the faith of people. So uh, this morning, let's go ahead and look at these 10 insights. Okay, we're going to consider 10 of them. And the first one is that Jesus recognized and responded to faith in those who came to him. This is something we observe in the life of the Roman centurion. Okay, So he comes to Jesus with a problem and he says that his servant is unwell. Matthew 8 verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. So Jesus says this in response to what the centurion says. He says, just speak, Jesus, say a word, and I know that my servant will be healed. And we read that in that very moment, in that very hour, the servant was healed. And Jesus responds to his faith and he says such great faith as if Jesus were searching for faith in the hearts of the people and now finally he's found faith um, and, and he's expressing his delight and he's saying this is great faith I have not found this kind of faith in anyone else the centurion simply believes in the power of my word if I where to say be healed, the centurion says that, you know, he believes his servant would be healed that very moment. And so Jesus recognized whenever he saw faith. Think about the paralytic man. In Matthew chapter 9, uh, it's interesting to see what people did for those they loved. So it's not uh, necessarily the faith of the paralytic man that I'm, I'm going to talk about right now, but uh, the, the faith of his friends. They made a hole in the roof and they put down a paralytic man for Jesus to heal. Okay? And Jesus was amazed by the faith that he saw in the hearts of these friends. And so uh, in Matthew 9, 2, it says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. So he, he forgave the sins of the paralytic man. And the next thing he did was heal him completely. So he could stand up, take his bed, and he could walk that very moment. And Jesus did that in response to the faith that he saw in the hearts of his friends. But what about the woman with the issue of blood? Once again, in Matthew chapter 9, even Mark chapter 5, you read about this one woman uh, who helplessly just did everything she could to reach Jesus somehow, though there was a pressing crowd uh, around Jesus. And Jesus could have taken notice of several people. I mean, the multitudes were around Jesus, but... The moment this woman touches the hem of his garments, you know, Jesus says, who touched me? And so Jesus recognized faith more than anything else. And that very moment we read that the flow of her blood was stopped. 
And Jesus said to her, be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was well. So there are, there, there are stories after stories. There's a Canaanite woman as well who comes to Jesus and, and she cries out to Jesus to deliver her child. And Jesus is amazed by her faith as well. And says, oh woman, great is your faith. And so today, in our lives, as we want God to move on our behalf, what God is looking for, you know, is not the loudest prayer. It's not, uh, uh, you know, talk about anything else. It's, it's not a prayer in King James, right? Uh, absolutely none of, uh, not all that, but what God is really looking for is mustard seed faith in our hearts. And if he can find that, even today, Jesus is someone who will release that miracle and do the work of healing and do the work of deliverance in our lives. So God responds to our faith. As we put our faith in his word, as we put our faith in who he is, you know, we can be sure that we will walk in miracles. We will walk as overcomers in our lives. The second insight that uh, we can learn from experiences of people in, in the Bible is that Jesus sometimes checked the faith of people. Okay, It was as if he was saying, hey, how does your faith account look? Is there any currency in there, right? Do you have, uh, how, what does it look like? Is it, does it have a little bit of, of faith currency or, or is it full of faith currency? Uh, the blind men who came to Jesus in Matthew chapter 9, verses 28 to 29. Now you, you find that Jesus asked them, asks them a question. They come to him for healing so they could see and this is what Jesus asked him he says do you believe that I am able to do this do you believe that I am able to do this God can do anything yet the norm is that God looks for our faith to do things in our lives and so when the blind man said yes Lord what he had to tell them is that according to your faith, let it be to you. So whatever our faith is, God is saying, according to that, in proportion to that, you will see your miracles. You will receive those promises. And this is not the first time. Even the, the man whose son was demon possessed in Mark chapter 9, Jesus says to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So it's strange, but sometimes God is counting on us. God is, is asking us to, let, to show him the faith that we have. And when he finds faith, and thank God, Jesus said, a mustard seed faith is enough right, to move mountains. When he can find that faith in us, no, he is, is able to work miracles in our lives. You know, what is it that, that we're experiencing uh, in our lives? Are, are there delays in our lives? Uh, have, we, have we started, you know, uh, uh, in the assignment of God and now facing all kinds of challenges? You know, are, are we sick in our physical bodies? Or uh, is there an oppression that has to be broken off of our lives? You know, God would look at us and ask the same question uh, as we approach him and say, Do you believe? That I can do this. And it's when we say, yes, Lord, that God would say to us, let it be done according to your faith. Okay, So this uh, is another learning for us that God many times asks people to show their faith. And it's only then that they are able to receive from God. The next understanding about faith that we have is that God calls us to have faith even in hopeless situations. Okay? Because God is God and he is above all. And you know, he can shift, he can change anything in our lives. So even when people faced impossible situations, God 
encouraged faith in them now two uh, such situations that we see in scripture one is in mark 5 when jairus comes to uh, jesus and you know he he comes to jesus to call jesus to come over and heal his daughter you know his, he, his daughter is very sick uh, and the funny thing is that people around him would have wondered hey your child is very sick she might die any moment why are you even here to talk to jesus it already seems like an impossible situation but something worse happened while he was talking to jesus you know uh, we we read that his someone came with the news that the do- daughter died but look what jesus told him at that point Jesus just said to him do not be afraid only believe the situation has gone from bad to worse and Jesus is this what you want to tell us do not be afraid only believe because god can change impossible situations and Jesus went and raised the dead girl back to life our god is someone who gives life to the dead things which is why he calls us to have faith even if we are facing an impossible circumstance and an impossible situation what about the case of lazarus okay lazarus died and uh, uh, you know mary martha they were trying to explain to jesus what what a terrible circumstance you know had had happened to, to them um So Martha says to Jesus at one point Lord by this time there is a stench for he has been dead 4 days. You know don't we do that to God to we'll try and explain to him how terrible the situation is that God you probably don't understand. You know it's it's already over. This can't get any better. But Jesus said this to her. Did I not say to you that if you would believe you would see the glory of god i don't know if they shook jesus up and said jesus did you hear what we said lazarus is in the grave for 3 days um, and and you know there's a stench because he is decaying but jesus is telling them did i not tell you that you will see the glory of god if you simply believe So God calls us to have faith even in impossible situations because he is a God who uh, can turn around any situation even a dead one now he's a God who gives life to the dead things he's a God who brings hope in hopeless times and so we are called to have faith in God Jesus encouraged people many a time to act their faith Sometimes he spoke words powerful words over them and said be healed and immediately they received their healing but there were other times where Jesus required them to do something so when the 10 lepers came to him what he did was he said you know you go back and show yourselves to the priest and as they did what Jesus told them to do they found that they were healed so it required an action on the part of these 10 lepers to receive the promise of healing into their physical bodies and jesus did this uh, a couple of other times as well to a noble man you know when he came to jesus in in john chapter 4 and he asked jesus to to heal his child jesus told him go your way your son lives so jesus wanted him to act his faith since jesus had spoken to him and said that the son would be healed you know uh, he w- he just wanted this noble man to go back in faith to find the son well and the noble man did it and the son was healed there was another time when a blind man came to jesus and he he uh, put spit on the mud and and he he took that a mixture and he put it on uh, this blind man's eyes uh, and he told him go and wash yourself you know in the pool of siloam and as this man did 
what God had asked him to do, he, he found that suddenly he could see. But there was a requirement to do something about their faith. Even today, you know, many of us, we're believing God for different things. Maybe some of us are believing God for a job. Okay, and nothing good is coming our way. But can we act on our faith? Can we do something about it even when we don't have the job? You know, maybe get your resume done, right? Instead of saying, I'll do it when I hear of a good job. No, no, no. Do it now. Make your resume now. If you're believing God for a good job tomorrow, there are several other things you know, where we say that we're trusting God, we're believing God, uh, that God will lead me uh, in the ministry. I know many people will be healed when I pray, but are we praying today? Are we praying those small prayers today? Right, so take a step. Advance boldly. Do something about your faith. You know, faith just inertly sitting and, and waiting on God to show up. You know, God is saying, I'm waiting on you. Don't wait on me. I'm waiting on you. You do something about your faith. And when we move, we'll be surprised. You know, like the blind man who went and washed his eyes. All he did was obey Jesus. Go and wash his eyes. And suddenly, he's able to see. Because he acted on his faith. He did what God told him to do. So there are times where we've got to rise up and do something about what we believe. Instead of uh, telling God that God, faith is of the heart and I've got faith in my heart. No, act it, act it out and, and, and we will walk in those blessings. So um, I encourage you to please track with me as I go forward. So we've looked at four insights um, and there are six more to cover. The next one is that Jesus demonstrated that faith could affect nature. The classic example is Luke chapter 8 when Jesus and his disciples uh, were on a boat and he had already spoken to them and told them that they would go to the other side. So there was an intended end to this journey. Uh, there, there was an outcome, expected outcome, right, uh, that, that Jesus had in mind. And yet, as they started on this journey, they encountered a storm. And the disciples were afraid. They were afraid and, and they woke him up. This is what they told him. Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm. But he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water and they obey him. Jesus demonstrated his faith. He asked the disciples first, look, when you're in a storm, where is your faith? Why didn't you exercise your faith first? But he didn't stop at that. He went ahead and spoke to the storm, the weather, and it heeded the words that came out of Jesus' mouth. You know, peace be still and the storm calmed down. So Jesus showed them that nature, weather, when inanimate things heed the voice of God. They heed the sound of faith. Think about the fig tree in Mark chapter 11. Jesus spoke to a tree. Well, that's really weird. And his disciples could have thought, Oh, what kind of a man are we following? Here he's talking to the tree. He's, you know, talking to this and that. But Jesus knew the power of exercising faith through the spoken word. And so he commanded nature. He commanded things around him. And what the disciples observed was that this faith really works. 
and nature listens to the voice of faith and a beautiful thing that jesus added in there as he was talking to the disciples about speaking in faith is to have faith in god now how can you believe in your heart and speak it without doubting in your heart only when we know who god is and what his nature is you know knowing that god you are a healer and therefore you know i speak healing over my body i just want to share from uh, my own experiences you know regarding uh, believing in god you know this this statement that jesus made have faith in god um you know how many of us agree that there are there are moments in our lives there are circumstances that come our way you know, jesus said that in this world you will have tribulation but take heart i have overcome the world so uh a cu- there are there are you know quite a few uh, experiences but i just want to share two uh, and the first one is when um, i i was at my new job and you know how it is uh, you learn so much in theory but finally when you've got to come and practice it some things are easy but then there are other things that are just so hard so you know that happened to me when uh, when uh, when my boss gave me an assignment and i had to use a software and do some research uh, and the moment he told me to do that you know very boldly i said uh, yes i can do it okay and and so he was like okay fine like get it done uh, and then i was sitting in my cabin uh, and that particular cabin you could close the door you know a bit uh, and so uh it was around lunch time and i still remember i closed the door and put my head on my table i'm like what did i do you know what did i just say that i can i can do it uh, and so i was looking to god and i was saying god i have faith in you you brought me uh, you led me to do this degree and and god you gave me this job and i believe uh, that that i can do this so god i can do all things through christ who gives me strength so i i'm saying all this as i'm putting my head on the table uh, right and a verse of scripture just comes to my heart you no know, 1 john 5:4 it says um um that that which is born of god overcomes the the world okay and this is the victory that overcomes even our faith and so at that moment i knew what god was telling me to do have faith in god you can do this and so you know i s- started in 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 a small way just working on on whatever was given to me uh, and and that entire assignment you know by the time we submitted it it was well appreciated and all that but i could never forget day 1 of starting on that project because i knew uh, what kind of a a condition i was in so god was calling me to practice my faith in my everyday life okay and another uh, 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 personal experience i believe it it will edify and strengthen you which is why i'm sharing uh, so this second experience is is when um, all of a sudden uh, my mother was was diagnosed with uh, with you know w- one of the last stages of cancer uh, and that day was really a uh, crazy because none of us expected uh, such such a thing to happen uh, but the doctors called all of us our family members and they had this time of counseling where they were explaining to us all all the reasons why she wouldn't make it uh, for more than 2 days right on life support that she would not make it for more than 2 days uh, and and that afternoon you know it's it's so vivid in my imagination we came out of the doctor's chamber and i cannot explain it in words but the same thing that which is born of god overcomes the world have faith in god have faith in god and and as i was meditating on all these scriptures there's there's that strength on the inside you know that there's a voice uh, in our spirit the voice of the word the voice of god in us which says that she will make it and you know we didn't go around trying to convince the doctors because they were very convinced that she wouldn't make it so long story short uh they gave her two days but she she lived for two and a, roughly two and a half years more um and the very things that they said she would not be able to do uh, she was able to do most of those things right uh, and she was able to talk to us uh, be um you know uh, be coherent and all of that almost towards the end uh, of her life and then she went to be with the lord uh, but uh, as i look back at these examples and several others in my life you know god 
teaches us faith and he wants us to walk in faith you know we are we are called to live by faith what are we going through every situation exercise that faith speak to that mountain you speak to inanimate objects right so i i do that to uh, the vehicle sometimes when it's not moving hey in the name of jesus you got to move <laughs> okay so you use your faith maybe in small ways small ways but just use your faith speak to the mountain speak to the things around you speak to the circumstances the situations uh, and and the god kind of faith will move the mountain the sixth insight we gain from jesus and his ministry jesus accommodated people outside his agenda simply because they had faith the roman centurion the canaanite woman but they were not jewish and when they came to jesus he knew very well that doing something for them would be crossing the boundary that god had given him as you know uh, something to watch out for when he came to the earth he was only supposed to minister to the jews and to the canaanite woman he said the bread of the children is not given to dogs what was he saying he was talking about healing as the bread of the children which is only meant for the jews and look at the faith of this woman she is not a jewish lady and she tells jesus but jesus even the dogs eat the crumbs even the dogs eat the crumbs what was she doing she was showing her faith to him and saying god i know you can do something for me even though i do not belong to your people and sure enough you know jesus did what she wanted there was deliverance for her child even today now we might look at people and box them up and say they don't have a walk with god so and so is not a believer they don't have faith god i don't think a miracle can take place but god is god now he does not need our permission to bless people so there are times when god will move sovereignly faith even in someone who is outside of his children he still responds we find unbelievers get healed you know they experience uh, some amazing miracles and you're thinking god but how they're not under the covenant but faith moves god amen faith moves god even if someone um is outside of his children the seventh insight is that jesus helped people when they struggled with their faith in mark chapter 9 verse 24 now this man who comes to the disciples of jesus first and he says deliver my son and they're not able to do it and finally they take this boy to jesus jesus of course you know uh, looks at these these disciples and he's upset he's like why couldn't you all deliver this boy but then he goes and does it anyway but before that you know he asks this man do you believe that i can do this and such an honest reply this man says god jesus i believe but please help my unbelief struggling with unbelief but jesus did not rebuke him he didn't say oh there's unbelief in your heart don't come to me not at all in fact jesus answered his request and the boy was delivered anyway for whatever faith this man had think about peter who was called to walk on the water in matthew 14 jesus says come and peter starts walking 
but when he starts looking at the the winds around him he starts sinking jesus still holds him while he's sinking jesus still saves him and he asks him a question he says why did you doubt why did you doubt this shows us the heart of god no god knows that many a time our faith has to grow in him so in moments where we may not have you know faith to its full or max god is not someone who puts us puts, puts us out and says i will not do the miracle for you but he is a god who will help us even when we are struggling with unbelief but his expectation is that we will overcome and push forward uh, we will get rid of the unbelief and receive the miracle that god has in store for us and this should be something as believers we should also engage in doing we find people who have faith we find people who have no faith but as children of god who understand uh, the operation of faith one of the things that we can do is we can we can share the word with them we can teach them from scripture we can we can uh, tell them about jesus and the way he ministered to people and begin to build faith in them so maybe they're in an impossible circumstance and we're looking at them and saying why can't they believe why can't we help undergird the little faith that they have with god's word and help increase it help build it so that they can come to a place but they can receive the miracle of god for their lives so jesus was someone who helped people even when they struggled with unbelief he doesn't put us away and condemn us but he still pulls us out while we are sinking and all he wants from us is faith why did you doubt just believe in god the eighth insight there were times when jesus healed and worked miracles independent of individuals faith similar to what we were talking about jesus healing people outside uh, of the jewish community and today those who may not be born again they still experience healings we find that there are times when god moves sovereignly without faith the classic example is a man at the pool of bethsaida who lay there for 38 years now everyone else in scripture came to jesus you know either they cried out son of david heal me or or or, or touch the hem of his garment they did something to show god that they had faith but here's a man he's just lying beside the pool for years and nobody knows how much faith he had nobody knows if he even heard about jesus and his miracle working power but jesus goes to this man and he heals him and people could have asked the question you are teaching about faith jesus excuse me how much faith did this man have god doesn't owe us an explanation no he works the way he works sometimes independent of the faith of people god still gives them their miracles so there was a blind man and people asked the question who sinned he sinned his parents sinned whatever it is jesus didn't think of all that but he went ahead and healed that man now did that blind man believe we do not know but jesus healed him anyway so there are times where god will move sovereignly independent of an individual's faith and touch them powerfully but generally god requires faith on our part to do the miracle the next insight that we gain is that jesus rebuked his disciples for being of little faith many times uh matthew 8 
in the storm when when the disciples are fearful in verse 26 he says why are you fearful o you of little faith now when we look at the challenges and make them bigger than the nature of god and the power of god you know god looks at us and we we could probably just hear him say the same thing why are you fearful o oh, you of little faith if only you had faith you could do something about this very situation same thing when peter was walking on the water in matthew 14 and verse 31 when jesus caught peter and saved him from sinking he says o oh, you of little faith why did you doubt many other instances even uh, at the time when jesus had people listening to him and uh, you know they they wanted to serve food to the multitudes his disciples were wondering how are we going to do this this is a miracle of provision god it's it's just not possible there are too many people how are we going to provide for all these people he tells them why are you discussing among yourselves you know is this something that god cannot do where is your faith where is your faith have your ha have faith in god and when the disciples could not cast out the demon as well you know jesus looks at them and these are the very words of jesus this is in matthew 17 verse 17 he says o faithless and perverse generation how long shall i be with you i mean think about this having little faith being faithless brings a rebuke from god god rebuked those who didn't have faith and he's using a strong term and he says perverse generation for what for simply being faithless so being fa just as much as faith pleases god unbelief god cannot put up with unbelief god hates unbelief and he's addressing his disciples as a perverse generation because there is no faith in their hearts god wants us to have faith when we have faith he can work miracles we can walk in the supernatural but what if we don't have faith you know we would be like uh, uh, the people of nazareth you know, the very town where jesus grew up but we read that he couldn't do many miracles there people looked at him as oh that that boy we know him you know we we know his parents we know his father who's a carpenter because they thought of him as just another person in the city but they didn't put their faith in jesus as the messiah and when people did not put their faith in him you know we see that jesus could not do many miracles he just walked around did a couple of things a few things here and there and and then he just had to move on to another city where people were willing to trust god people were willing to put their faith in god so just as much as our faith can work for us our unbelief it's a uh, very hard to understand and even accept it but it's almost like our unbelief can tie god's hands you know an all powerful sovereign god we can stop him from moving how can we do that when we don't trust him when we don't believe when we don't have faith so just considering the way jesus taught us about faith now this morning i just want to encourage us no matter what we are going through you know he is the same jesus who hasn't changed 
And God would look over an entire crowd just to find one person who has mustard seed faith. And he would rejoice over it and say, wow, I have not found such great faith in Bangalore. Amen? And so church, let's have faith in God. You know, what does our faith account look like? You know, faith connects us to God. Okay, so we have a relationship with God. It's like having a bank account. So just because we have a, a bank account in a certain bank, we, even if, you know, uh, we, we, we may have several bank accounts, but the transactions in a certain account mean something, right? That you're operating from that particular bank. So just having a relationship with a bank doesn't mean much. But when the transactions are being done, that's when you're receiving money from that account into your pocket and you're able to use it and, and uh, experience everything that, that money, that currency can buy for you. And faith is like that, you know. This is just an analogy for us to understand. When there's faith and we use that faith, we release that faith, you will find, we will find that operation of faith in that manner helps us receive from God. The second Peter chapter uh, 1 and verse 4, uh, it, it says that God has all these great and wonderful promises that we should walk in because that will help us experience the divine nature of God. But we cannot do it if we are not operating in faith. All of it is available by grace. But we've got to receive it through faith. Amen? So church, uh, let's have faith in God. I just encourage us to, to put our faith in God. No matter how the situation looks. If God said it, that settles it. Even if the world tells us that we are in a dead-end situation. We're at the end of the rope. It's hopeless. Jesus would only look at us the way he looked at Martha and said, Did I not tell you? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Can we just rise to our feet, church? We'll exercise what we've learned this morning about faith and operating in faith. I invite the worship team up to come and lead us. The Bible tells us that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. As we're making our journey of faith in the Lord, be encouraged. Even if you find yourself sinking this morning and you're saying, God, like that man who came to you for his son's deliverance, I believe God, but please help my unbelief. God looks at you with great compassion and he's still willing to release that miracle into your life. So can we just hold on to God, no matter how our faith looks this morning, and say, God, we believe. And God, we want to see your glory. We know that as we believe you, God, that we will see your glory, God. We will see your power demonstrated. God, we will see breakthroughs in every area of our lives, Father.
shed on the cross forgives your sin today and if you're someone you're saying no I just want this new life in Jesus I invite you to just pray along with me and receive the Lord Jesus into your heart today this morning all you have to do is to just repeat this prayer by faith you know the faith that we've been talking about believing in your heart just repeat uh, these these words with me dear Jesus thank you for dying on the cross for me I'm sorry for my sins and I give my life to you come into my life change me oh God and make me a new person help me God to follow you all 
all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If there's anyone, you've made this decision. It's the best decision of your life. We just want you to indicate by raising your hand to us. Uh, this is so we can give you uh, some resources just to be in touch with you and encourage you uh, in your walk with the Lord. Anyone here, you made that decision. Can we just see your hands? Can you please put it up? Hi. So we know you've prayed. Okay, we have someone in the balcony there. So that's nice. Anybody else? Anyone else? Okay. We have someone in, in front here. You can just, okay, praise God. There's one person here and praise God for that. Anybody else? Just go ahead and indicate to us. Right, so God bless you and we'll be in touch with you, encouraging you uh, in, your, in your journey with the Lord. We're going to take uh, some more time to pray for the needs of the people uh, here. So let's just go ahead and look to God this morning uh, and let's speak these words of faith uh, in different circumstances uh, of our lives and uh, I just declare over those of us you know, we are in entire financial need uh, in financial uh, problems of some sort and I just release the power of God into that circumstance the way Jesus multiplied uh, the, the bread, the food fish and he fed the multitude this morning uh, I just speak and declare a miracle of provision over that financial circumstance the word of God says that it is he Deuteronomy 8 18 who gives us the power to get wealth so uh, I just speak by faith uh, over over that mountain that you see in your finances I command it to move in Jesus name I just speak a blessing and a turn around in the name of Jesus thank you God thank you Jesus thank you God those of us who are believing God for, for healing just encourage us to go ahead and, and uh, put our faith in God right now release that faith and declare the word over yourself and say I know that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You may not see, uh, you, you may not have seen changes uh, as you're standing on the word, but that doesn't matter. Speak the word. Speak the word. And we will eat the fruit of it. Yes, God, I just speak, Lord, healing uh, over bodies right now in the name of Jesus. I just sense um, uh, people with, with some sort of problems in your spine area, your vertebrae. Uh, I just sense the power of God going through uh, the back, the vertebrae. And just receive what God is doing in your body right now in Jesus' name. Uh, people with, with pain in, uh, in the abdomen area on the right side. I just sense God is healing someone. If, if, if you are here, then you can just show your hand and, and indicate to us that that's you. So we know that you know, God is doing that for you right now. Let's just go ahead and continue to have faith in God for healing, physical heal, healing in our bodies. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for, for touching our bodies and God, restoring strength, restoring movement in the body parts right now, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for doing that. Father, we praise you that you are a restorer. And this morning, we're going to believe God um, to excel. I just sense that uh, some of us who have given up pursuing God's best for our lives, I just want to encourage you to continue believing 
God. He is a good God. He's a God who puts dreams in our hearts. He's a God who gives us goals uh, that that we can go after and achieve. And he wants to see each one of us arise and shine uh, and give glory to our God. And so this morning, uh, I, I believe that God wants us to put our faith in him and trust him and trust him to do well in our lives. God, I just pray for those of us, oh God, who are weary, Lord, in our in our journey of faith, Lord, those who are those who ha- have become weak, in a sense, oh God, to just be renewed, God, be renewed in their faith, God, and to continue to walk with you, and God, we thank you, even as they do that, Lord, we thank you for the victory, Lord. Your word says you always lead us, God, in triumphant victory in Christ Jesus and Father we just declare it over them in Jesus mighty name God we thank you we thank you for all that you are doing Lord in the hearts and lives of the people and Father God all glory Lord all honor belongs to you you are worthy of our praise in Jesus name Amen and may the grace of our Lord Jesus the love of the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever and everyone said Amen Amen. God bless you church have a great day and a great week ahead continue to put your faith in God and move mountains Amen, thank you We trust that this message was a blessing to you We would love to hear from you You can email us at contact at abcwo.org. Also visit our website abcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.